Let's talk about exponential functions today. Those are functions that are of this form. a equals p times b to the x. Notice that x is up there in the exponent. That's why these things are called exponential functions, because the variable is up in the exponent. Now p and b are just numbers, well they are in general, and they are given names. b is called the base, and that's always got to be a number bigger than zero. Can't be a negative number there. p can be any number. That's just called the initial amount. Here's an example of an exponential function. 5 times 3 to the x. So here the base is 3 and the initial is 5. So let's take a look at this function, 5 times 3 to the x. Now let's see what f of 2 is. That just means plug in 2 for x. So you get 5 times 3 squared, which is 45. Now, if you wanted to write this as a point, you could. 2 is the x, and 45, the number that you get out of the function, is always the y value. So if you wrote it as a point, it would be 2 comma 45. So now we're going to do a difficult example here where we're going to try to write an equation for an exponential function through these two points, 1, 4, and 3, 100. So let's try to dissect what all this stuff means. We're looking for an equation of an exponential function. What does an exponential function look like? Well, that's what we just talked about. It has this form. So what we're trying to do in this problem is figure out what p and what b are as numbers. Otherwise, a and x are going to remain a and x in our final answer. p and b just need to be numbers. And we need to use these two points, 1, 4, and 3, 100, to do that. So let's see how they come into play. 1, 4 means when x is 1, a is 4. So let's plug that stuff in to our very top exponential equation and see what that looks like. So I replaced a with 4 and x with 1. 3 comma 100 means almost the same thing, just with different numbers. So if you plug that into the top equation, that exponential equation, this is what you get. Now this is not our answer. We need to use these two pieces of information to figure out what p and b are as numbers. So I just rewrote our two equations that we came up with on the last page. Now I want you to try to figure out how we can solve for p and b. We have two equations and two unknowns. Unknowns just mean two letters that we don't know what they are. P and B. But we want to figure out what they are as numbers. Here's the trick. Divide the two equations. Divide both sides. So take 4 divided by 100, and that's equal to P times B. B to the 1 is just B, so I just wrote that as B, divided by P times B cubed. Now we're going to solve for B. The reason we're going to solve for B is because the P's cancel out. Do a little bit of algebra. 4 divided by 100 is 1 over 25. And then you get that equals 1 over b squared, because everything else canceled. Now cross multiply. Take square root. And you'll find that b is either positive or negative 5. But if you remember from the very first slide, the base b can never be a negative number. So b has to be equal to 5. So we're halfway there. We've got b, and actually finding p is much easier than finding b. All you have to do is substitute. You plug 5 in for b into either one of the equations. I'm going to plug it into the first one. And then, of course, 5 to the 1 is just 5, so you divide both sides by 5. 
and you get P is 4 fifths. So now we have B and we have P. But the question wanted us to write an equation, an exponential equation. So what we need to do is go back to our exponential formula, our exponential function, and just plug in P and plug in B. And there's your final answer. Now you might be tempted to cross out the fives. Don't do that. The four-fifths does not have x as an exponent. Only the five to the x has x as an exponent. So you don't get to mix and match those things. All right, your turn.